What do people look for in a compact seven seat family people carrier? Good build quality, neat packaging, a versatile seating system, a reputation for reliability and a choice of frugal engines. Toyota's much improved Verso certainly ticks all those boxes. Slowly but surely Toyota's product range is becoming more desirable. Not only the sporty niche models but also the more practical cars in the lineup, like this one, the Verso MPV. This is the third generation version of Toyota's compact family sized MPV, a vehicle we first saw in 2001 badged as the Corolla Verso. That model only had five seats but a seven seat uh, design followed in 2004 before this Mark III version made its debut in 2009, also with up to seven seats but by now branded purely as Verso. It was an exceptionally competent car but it wasn't one you'd necessarily try and find reasons to buy and too often for Toyota's liking potential customers passed up the opportunity for ownership in favour of more stylish or perhaps more dynamic options in the compact people carrying segment. Hence the need for this revised third generation version introduced at the end of 2012 and targeted at leaving more of a lasting impression. On the balance sheet with lower running costs, on the road with extra refinement, re revised suspension and sharper steering and on your driveway with sharper looks and extra equipment. A car in essence to cover all of your family transport needs, Chapter and Verso, in a way that you'll feel good about. Let's check it out. When it comes to vehicle dynamics, the expectations of family buyers have changed quite a bit since this Verso was first launched in 2009. Back then it was still quite acceptable for a car of this kind to exhibit a set of largely undemanding driving manners, but other brands have since proved just how much better than that a model in this segment can be. Toyota's engineers needed to try harder while still continuing to satisfy the vast majority of owners simply wanting a comfortable A to B motoring. Essentially this car needed to feel a bit sharper, it does. The body's more rigid than before and the power steering's being tweaked for extra precision and feel. There's a revised suspension layout too which will uh, improve comfort and stability. And the difference all this makes? Well if you own the original version of this uh, third generation Verso it shouldn't be long before you notice it. Pressing on through a series of bends the car will feel more confident and agile and even in uh, more relaxed motoring when you're cornering, the reduction in body roll will keep your passengers happier. They'll like the fact that it's quieter too. That stiffer body, sleeker styling and extra soundproofing see to that, ensuring that vibrations are far less intrusive, even at motorway speeds where it's no longer necessary to raise your voice to communicate with passengers in the rearmost row. Not even in the diesel version that most customers choose. There's no longer a D4D 180 variant, uh, a really pokey diesel, so uh, diesel Verso buyers must now be content with a 122 brake horsepower version of the familiar 2 litre unit. Like all Versos, it'll get you from rest to 62 miles an hour in 11 seconds on the way to a top speed of 115 miles an hour. If that's performance that you'd like to achieve through petrol power, then there are a couple of Valvematic options. Either a uh, 130 brake horsepower manual 1.6 or a 145 brake horsepower multi-drive S automatic 1.8. Here though I've got the diesel which thanks to 310 newton meters of torque feels the quickest of the trio in ordinary day-to-day -day driving. Toyota is keen to stress that the changes to this third generation Verso go a bit deeper than is usual with a mid-term facelift wash and brush up. In all over 470 parts have been changed, 60% of them visible and the car is also 20 millimeters longer than before. What you'll notice most though is the brand's latest family face, the so-called keen look we first saw on the company's second generation Auris family hatch. 
It certainly gives this Verso a more purposeful stance, dominated at the front end by this large trapezoidal lower grille set within a redesigned bumper, and this smaller upper grille, which features a chrome-plated horizontal trim bar that runs the full width between sleeker headlamp units that incorporate daytime running lights. Moving to the side, where there are smaller, more aerodynamically efficient door mirrors, the trademark dual zone styling remains much as before, with a strong character line that sweeps from the leading edge of the front bumper, then flows upwards through the rear doors and the rear pillar to define the line of the rear roof-mounted spoiler. It all nicely sets off uh, rearward styling that, as at the front, includes extra chrome decoration, a revised bumper, and smarter rear light clusters. Now, what hasn't changed are the essential dimensions of this car, wheelbase height width, which means that there's no more room inside. So, as with virtually all compact seven-seat MPVs, this Third row seating is really intended for children. If you really must put adults here, then you'll find it fortunate that these seats recline. To keep bigger folk happy, even on short journeys though, you're probably going to need to go a bit further than that and persuade those in this middle seating row to make use of the 195 millimeters of backwards and forwards sliding range that's on offer to enable some kind of passenger legroom compromise to be reached. Now, this second row is made up of three individual sliding seats, which my kids really liked. They also appreciated this optional Skyview panoramic roof and were pleased to find plenty of storage spaces, including these underfloor compartments and seat back storage beneath stowable aviation style fold out tables. There's plenty of storage space up front too with a spacious center console box uh, decently sized door pockets and a twin compartment glove box with a cooled upper section that's big enough to hold a 1.5 litre bottle plus an 8.2 litre lower section. In other words, everything is just as sensible as it was before with the so-called smart wave dynamism dashboard design placing the gear lever comfortably close to the steering wheel, just where you'd want it. What's different though with this improved Verso is that all this sense and sensibility is a good deal easier to live with thanks to a range of tasteful trim improvements, notably the softer satin black paint finish and the warm satin chromed highlights that you'll find everywhere from the air vents to around the centrally positioned instrument cluster. And boot space, well, with all seven seats occupied, and that's an unlikely scenario for most buyers, you get 155 litres here. Though there is an 11 litre underfloor compartment uh, that's enough to hold three six pack cases of 1.5 litre plastic bottles. Use the neat Toyota Easy Flat seating system that uh, is said to provide up to 32 seating permutations and fold this third row into the floor and you increase your likely carriage capacity to 440 litres. In seven seat models that rises to 982 litres with the middle seat also folded to create a totally flat surface that's 1575 millimetres long and 1430 millimetres wide. For some time now, Toyota's pricing has been sharpening against its rivals, and here's another case in point. Expect to pay somewhere in the 18 to 24,000 pound bracket for your Verso, which makes this car very competitively priced indeed. Only the base trimmed entry level petrol 1.6 offers the five seat only layout that very few potential buyers will want, given that a seven seat version is only 500 pounds more. 
around half of all potential Verso buyers will want to pay the £1,500 premium necessary to graduate from the petrol 1.6 to the 2-litre D4D diesel variant I have here, a car and engine combination that's priced from around £21,500. If you're a petrol person and want to know how much more it would be to graduate up from the base manual 1.6 to the automatic multi-drive S 1.8, the answer is £1,500. That stacks up very well against the obvious opposition in the seven-seat compact MPV sector. If you're looking at a Verso in seven-seat petrol 1.6 litre guise, uh, a Verso would save you around £500 over an equivalent 1.6 litre Vauxhall Zafira or Peugeot 5008, just over £1,000 over a 1.2 litre TSI Volkswagen Touran, just over £2,000 over a comparable Ford Grand C-Max 1 litre T EcoBoost 125 PS, and just over £3,000 over a comparable Renault Grand Scenic 1.2 TCE. And none of these alternatives can match the base petrol Toyota's 130 bhp output or its performance. It's a similar story when it comes to comparisons with the Verso 2-litre D4D diesel that I've been trying here. It offers more power and performance than most of the opposition and is more competitively priced, saving you around £600 on a Peugeot 5008 1.6 litre HDI, around £1,500 on the most affordable diesel versions of cars like Volkswagen's Touran, Ford's Grand C-Max, Vauxhall's Zafira or the Mazda 5, and nearly £3,000 on the most affordable diesel-powered Renault Grand Scenic. If, having considered all of this, you conclude that it is a Verso that your family really needs, then regardless of your choice between 1.6 or 1.8 litre petrol power, or indeed this 2 litre D4D diesel, you'll be expecting a decent level of specification to be included as standard, which is largely true, though the real niceties like alloy wheels, roof rails and the Toyota Touch infotainment system with Bluetooth and a rear parking camera only start at mid-range trim level. Go for a baseline variant and you get, well, the basics. Daytime running lights, front fog lamps, a Thatcham Category 1 alarm, power windows and mirrors, air conditioning that also cools the upper glove box, a four-speaker stereo with steering wheel mounted controls, a USB jack and an aux in connectivity point, plus a trip computer and hill start assist control to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. Options I'd want to consider uh, include upgrading the Toyota Touch infotainment system to touch and go status so that it includes sat-nav. I'd also want to look at things like the Skyview panoramic glass roof, a cargo liner, a reversible boot mat and a large 360 litre roof box for holiday trips. Standard safety stuff includes twin front side and curtain airbags plus a driver's knee bag. There are also ISOFIX child seat fastenings, anti-whiplash head restraints and all the usual electronic assistance features for braking, traction and stability control to justify a five-star rating in Euro NCAP's independent crash tests. In terms of running costs, you might think that because this Verso campaigns with a 2-litre D4D diesel engine against comparable rivals with 1.6-litre diesel units, then it might be at a disadvantage. But in actual fact, the figures are very, very class competitive. This uh, D4D Verso managing 57.6 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and putting out 129 grams per kilometre of CO2. And that's slightly better, in fact, than you'll get from uh, comparable 1.6 litre diesel versions of the Peugeot 5008 and the Mazda 5. As for the petrol models, well, a 1.6 litre petrol uh, Verso manages 42.8 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 154 grams per kilometre of CO2, which is slightly better than a 1.6 litre petrol powered Vauxhall Zafira or Peugeot uh, 5008. It's a bit tougher to find direct competitors for the automatic only Verso Petrol 1.8 Multi-Drive S. But uh, its returns, 41.5 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 159 grams per kilometre of CO2 are quite on a par with much pricier um, rivals like Volkswagen's Touran 1.4 TSI 140 DSG. 
You can always buy a Toyota and feel reasonably confident that it's not going to cripple you financially with repair bills as soon as the long five-year warranty runs out. The used car market too has a healthy respect for the Japanese manufacturer's reliability record and depreciation levels are softened as a result. Buyers can also choose the Toyota Access System which gives you a guaranteed buyback price at the end of your ownership term and fixed price servicing deals. Insurance groupings range between 13 and 17. The Verso has always been a car you bought because it made sense. This one though does a bit more than that. Its compact seven seat family layout still ruthlessly ticks almost every practical box. And it remains a solidly appealing, take it as you find it, get the job done kind of vehicle that's thoroughly user friendly, especially with its easy to operate seating system. As before, you'll find that almost nothing will go wrong and that everything will feel just right. All that we've known since the third generation version of this Toyota was first launched in 2009. The difference now though comes with the injection of a little extra luxury and a lot of extra personality. True those won't be the things that will have first prompted you to buy a people carrier, but in a closely fought market where every contender seems similarly specced, they're the things that can make the difference. And they've created in this car a smarter, quieter, more efficient, more comfortable, and just plain better Verso. Overall, there are still few more practical, better built or more reliable choices in this segment. It's just that now you can make a head choice with a bit of heart too.